and welcome everyone. In this video, we will briefly discuss about angina with a special emphasis on anti-angina medications. So let's get right into it. Let's discuss the rationale for anti-angina therapy. Angina pectoris is the principal syndrome of ischemic heart disease characterized by chest pain which can radiate to the left shoulder, neck, jaw, and teeth as well. It occurs when oxygen delivery to the heart is inadequate for myocardial requirement. So these are the strategies or goals or aims of therapy when dealing with angina patient. And these include increase oxygen delivery to the myocardium. And this can be achieved by reversing the basospasm of the coronary vessels. Next is decrease oxygen requirement. And this can be done by decreasing the total peripheral resistance, cardiac output or both. In the next slide, I will show you the strategies or the drug therapies which particularly, particularly or specifically target these goals in order to achieve the therapeutic success. Now let's discuss the types of angina. We have stable angina, also known as exercise-induced angina. We have unstable angina, angina at rest. Atherosclerotic occlusion of the coronary vessels is the most common cause of stable and unstable angina. Occlusion of the left anterior descending artery accounts for around 45% of cases of stable and unstable angina. It has been documented that occlusion of right coronary artery accounts for around 30% of cases and occlusion of circumflex artery accounts for around 15% 15, 15 of cases of stable and unstable angina. Now the initial best choice is to give your patient or offer your patients vasodilator, that is nitrates. You can also give your patient beta blockers. Beta blockers have two main actions on the heart. Beta blockers decreases heart rate. Beta blockers desensitizes the myocardium to the actions of adrenaline. And these are beneficial effects for decreasing the workload and the oxy oxygen requirement of the heart and improving the symptoms of angina. Now we have another type of angina which is known as vasospastic angina, also called as Prince metal angina or variant angina. This occurs because of the reversible vasospasm of the coronary vessels and can be relieved or corrected by the administration of vasodilators like nitrates and calcium channel blocker. Now, thing to remember is that beta blockers are contraindicated in vasospastic angina. Why? Because by blocking beta-2 receptors, alpha receptors will be, yes, alpha receptors will be left unopposed. Now before going into the details of nitroglycerin, let's visit nitric oxide pathway. Nitric oxide or NO is a readily diffusible gas. It is synthesized in the endothelial cells from amino acid L-arginine, which we get it from the diet. Thanks to the enzyme nitric oxide synthase, which itself is activated by GQ proteins or GQ coupled receptors. Nitric oxide diffuses from the endothelial cells to the smooth muscle cells of the large veins, where it activates gonadal cyclase enzyme, which increases the levels of cyclic GMT and causes relaxation of the smooth muscles of the large vein, ultimately causes vasodilation. As you can see on the slide as well, that nitric oxide is synthesized in the endothelial cells from amino acid L-arginine. This reaction is catalyzed by nitric oxide synthase, which itself is stimulated by GQ proteins. Nitric oxide readily diffuses into the smooth muscles of the large veins, where 
it activates guanyl cyclase enzyme which catalyzes the conversion of GTP to cyclic GMP and causes relaxation. There are certain biochemical mediators of inflammation such as reditinins, serotonin, histamine, prostaglandins and leukotrienes which utilizes GQ proteins for the nit nitric oxide mediated relaxation of smooth muscles of large veins. We have acetylcholine also and its receptor as well and three type of receptor which is a GQ coupled receptor present on vessels but it is generally not innovated. But when it is activated by direct agonist, it utilizes nitric oxide or endothelial drive relaxing factor to activate monocyclic cyclic enzyme and increases the levels of cyclic GMP vasculature and causes vasodilation. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of nitrates and nitroglycerin which is a prototype nitrate. Now let's talk specifically about the mechanism of action of nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is a prototype nitrate and a prodrug as well. A prodrug has to be bioactivated first before it releases nitric oxide. The metabolic pathway by which nitroglycerin releases nitric oxide involves the participation of cysteine residues. And these cysteine residues come from the protein glutathione presented by GSH. SH represents the active functional group of cysteine amino acids. Now utilizing several steps which yet to be determined, nitroglycerin releases nitric oxide which stimulates guanyl cyclase which facilitates the conversion of GTP into cyclic GMP and promotes smooth muscle vasodilation smooth muscle relaxation. In the previous slide, we left our discussion on the point that nitroglycerin stimulates guanyl cyclase enzyme and in turn, in turns, it catalyzes the conversion of GTP into cyclic GMP. Now, increased levels of cyclic GMP stimulates protein kinase G. Protein kinase G in turns phosphorylates phosphatase enzyme and makes it active, which in turn dephosphorylates myosin light chain, which is basically a contractile protein, preventing its interaction with actin and in turn promotes relaxation. At therapeutic and low doses, nitrates, for example nitroglycerin, causes dilation of large veins. Veins, you know, are uh, the large capacitance vessels and by pulling blood into them preload can be decreased and workload on the heart can be decreased and uh, the objective of decreasing oxygen requirement to the heart or myocardium can be achieved as well. Now just below you can see that nitric oxide giving drugs are nitroprusside, a famous drug for handling uh, hypertensive emergencies. Hydralazine is also an antihypertensive agent and um, it is famous for SLE type of uh, hypersensitivity reaction. Now nitroglycerin is uh, also an important drug as far as uh, angina is concerned. Uh, down the line you can see neseridide. It is basically a recombinant form of NF and we use it in decompensated CHF but as its receptors utilizes um, and is associated with coronal cyclase stimulation. So pharmacology revolves around, um, you know, GMP, increased GMP levels and uh, rest to a smooth muscle relaxation in the same way. Now let's switch gears and talk about the side effects and contraindications of microdistribution. Adverse drug reactions to nitroglycerin are mostly related to vasodilation, or specifically venodilation, and that includes throbbing headache, flushing, orthostatic hypotension, syncope, and reflex tachycardia. Contraindications include drug allergy, hypotension, severe anemia, closed angle glaucoma, 
elevated intracranial pressures and also taken together with phosphodiesterase inhibitors like sildenafil, which is used in erectile dysfunctions, can enhance cyclic GNPRs, can cause marked drop in blood pressure and MIS well. So it should be avoided with phosphodiesterase inhibitors. Patients should also be advised to avoid activities that increases the chance for angina. That includes over exertions, tension, and overeating. When prescribing your patients nitrates or nitroglycerin, this should be taken into account in consideration. Then it's a scan. It is more like acute tolerance, which occurs within minutes to hours. It is significant in no expense. By this, I want to thank you for watching the video. If you think that this video is helpful to you, then do let me know by commenting in the comment section. Work hard, stay safe, stay home, stay blessed. Have a nice day.